out of me. Now, this this is from a drone, right? This bull leaked this footage right here. I want to show you. This is a bunker right here. This is an underground bunker. It's the entrance right here. This is the back part, and it goes down in the ground. And you see the field behind you, right? Let me show you. Let me show you how really how deep this shit is. It was it was neat to meet people from around the world. There, literally people from Japan, from Sweden, from New York City, from Chicago, from New Mexico. From there was actually some people there from Mars. Shapeshifters. <laughs> he was joking when he said Mars. So I haven't edited this footage yet, so you can see me swinging the camera around, but you can get a sense. I mean, these are it was all impossible to bunkers. know what this site was until we got into the air, and then suddenly you really get a sense of the expanse. Look at that. All of these are bunkers. White folks, rich white folks going underground. Why? Wait. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham. Yahweh Shai Bahasham. Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. All right, and uh, you saw that video dealing with um, a uh, patch of land where you have underground bunkers, which you have these things worldwide. All right, and um, you know the Jake who was, uh, you know, showing the video. He said, "Why? All right, why? What do they know? What what, what are the rich elite?" doing all right and it's not just edomites okay um of course we know that the ruler of this current beast system are the edomites and the elites you know are primarily edomites but you have other nations uh joined unto them as well um who are going to be in those bunkers all right for the purpose of prophecy being fulfilled now the reason why these elites will be in those bunkers is because the elites for the most part okay will survive nuclear destruction all right which is ultimately armageddon all right babylon the great is going to be destroyed no edomite <laughs> no uh jake outside of the elect will make it out of babylon the great you know no heathen whoever's on the soil all right, outside of the elect being delivered of Babylon the Great is going to be absolutely decimated. All right, but what we must understand is that the whole world is not going to be destroyed. All right, a lot of people who talk about the end of the world, okay, they love to uh, talk about it from the standpoint, okay, that uh, the whole world is going to end. Well, the Bible doesn't deal with the whole world ending, okay? The Bible deals with Esau's world ending, okay? You go to prophecy, Daniel, the seventh chapter. Um, what happens is after that fourth beast is destroyed, okay, Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter, judgment is going to sit after that fourth beast in the little horn that issues forth from it, which the little horn is Babylon the Great, the revival of the ancient Roman Empire. Okay, which is that that's the final of the heathen rulership. Okay, as a matter of fact, we can just get it in Daniel, the second chapter. It's more straight to the point. But uh, Daniel, the second chapter. It goes into the fourth beast, right in the 40th verse, which is the Roman Empire. All right, and then that Western Roman Empire fell, and then it was revived through the Renaissance period, which led uh, to Babylon the Great, NATO the EU. This is the beast system that we're currently living in. Now, Daniel 2 and 44, it says, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. See, there's no such thing as the end of the world. It's the end of Esau's world, the end of your world, as it says in the book of Second Edras, the sixth chapter. Okay. Whose world is that? Esau's world, who is the final, all right, uh, rulership of you heathen and the final captivity of the chosen people of Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai.
right? And the way it's going to be ended is through fire, <laughs> okay? Coming up on Babylon the Great, okay? War and all sorts of things happening on the planet Earth. Daniel, the second chapter in the 44 verse says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's only for the Israelites. Okay. It's going to crush the rest of the governments and the, and the, and the power so that be. Right. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. All of what kingdoms? All of the heathen who were in power at the time Yahweh Shah returns. Primarily the Edomites. That's why it says in Isaiah the 63rd chapter, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Isaiah the 34th chapter, which we'll get that in just a minute. The Lord is coming back specifically for you Edomites, but he's coming back to take down all of the wicked governments that run the world and set up a righteous government. Okay, so it's going to break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Okay, so... Going back to Revelation, the uh, the sixth chapter, this uh, guy asked why. Let's look at the video again. Let's see if I can bring it up. Gods who see the God in me. Now this this is from a drone, right? This bull leaked this footage right here. I want to show you. This is a bunker right here. This is an underground bunker. It's the entrance right here. This is the back part, and it goes down in the ground. And you see the field behind you, right? Let me show you. Let me show you how really how deep this shit is. It was it was neat to meet people from around the world. There, literally people from Japan, from Sweden, from New York City, from Chicago, from New Mexico. From there was actually some people there from Mars. Shape shifters. <laughs> he was joking when he said Mars. So I haven't edited this footage yet, so you can see me swinging the camera around, but you can get a sense. I mean, these are all impossible to bonkers. know what this site Come was it is. until we got into the air. And then suddenly you really get a sense of the expanse. Look at that. Wow. All of these are bonkers. White folks, rich white folks going underground. Why? Wait. All right. Why? What did the elite know? That they're going into these bunkers and, 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 and ready to hide. <laughs> So when you get Revelation, the sixth chapter, okay, we'll start at 12. It says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. This is destruction happening on the planet earth, which is what ultimately the prophets prophesying will lead to. Okay, because when you get Revelation 11, real quick, Revelation 11, and 11, and after three days and a half, okay, this is around 1970, where, you know, Abba Bibbins, the Israelites, all right, with the understanding of the New Testament, the New Covenant became, you know, prevalent in the earth. The hearts of the fathers was turned to the children, the hearts of the children turned to the fathers, and that led to what you see now with all of these different Israelite camps all over the earth. All right. You got brothers and sisters waking up. It says after three days and a half. All right. But only the elect is going to be delivered out of, you know, the remnant is going to be delivered. It says, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, the Israelites. And they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Now, these Israelites were in a dead state before that. Okay, so us standing up on our feet, meaning what? We, 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 life from on high came into us. We, we, we turned back to the Lord. We repented. Okay, and what, what happened from 1970 until now? The, the prophets went out. Okay, and fear started to fall upon them, which, which, which saw us because of our message, because this whole system, okay, uh, it's ran upon the ignorance of the Israelites. So to see us wake up, okay, and and hop out of the box and the uh, you know categories we were placed up in, it scares people. Okay, so great fear fell upon them and saw them. And what happened next? And they heard a great voice of out of heaven, 
saying unto them, come up hither, meaning they're going to get beamed up. The Israelites are going to get beamed up. Hopefully we're a part of that. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. All right. Tell a Christian to break this down. And in the same hour, there was a great earthquake, right? Destruction. And the 10th part of the city fell. What's the 10th part of the city? America. Okay. The zip code, the zip code and the FEMA regions are 10. It starts from zero. Okay. And it goes to nine. So America, Babylon, the great is going to be destroyed. The 10th part of the city fell and the, and in the earthquake were slain men of men, 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory unto the God of heaven because we're going to get beamed up. But ultimately, that 7,000 is a complete number who the Lord wants to be destroyed here in Babylon the Great. Okay? And then you're going to have war happening worldwide, but America, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. All right? The second woe is past, and behold, the third, the third woe is coming quickly. The third woe is this nuclear destruction we're reading about. World War III, Armageddon in the valley of Yahweh Shapat. So going back to Revelation, the sixth chapter, okay, it's going into that same thing. Revelation 6 and 12, and I, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell upon the earth. All right, this kingdom fell down, man. I don't mean the stars are going to come out of the sky. I mean... You know, the, the, the rulership of this world is going to be, hey, the first heaven is going to be passed away, which is the rulership of Esau, Edom. Okay? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. All right? Sit your ass in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, even as a fig casteth her untimely figs when, it is sh when she is shaken of a mighty wind. That's how this place is going to fall. Missiles, all sorts of things are going to be happening on the planet earth and it says in the heaven departed as a scroll when you look at a nuclear cloud when a nuclear blast the fire looks like a scroll see john the revelator is, is is you know at this you know at the time he was living nuclear missiles weren't made so he's writing the vision and telling you what he's seeing in the vision in the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together that's the best way he can describe what he saw with nuclear destruction. Okay. It says. Just go type in mushroom cloud. Or look up nuclear destruction. Or look up Nagasaki. <laughs> you know. And you'll see what he saw. Alright. He's seeing it in the form of a vision though. Right. And all of the prophets saw these visions. But they wrote them. They, they, they saw it in different from different perspectives. And wrote them. According to what they knew. And what they had back then. Where they were. Whatever captivity they were in. All right. In the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together in every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. So he sees nuclear destruction. Hey, when, when you get the book of Habakkuk. The third chapter. Habakkuk saw it, too. Habakkuk chapter 3, <laughs> man, wow, man, this is a vision he saw, um, Habakkuk 3 and 3, God came from Teman, because he's going to come through that same entrance, all right, as he came when he brought the law and the Holy One from the Mount Paran, Selah, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. The chariots returning and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power. That was the chariot with the fire coming from it. You can read about that in the uh, second edges, the 13th chapter before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. That's how powerful the second coming of the Lord is going to be. The, the mountains are going to be moving. 
at the presence of the chariots and the, and the destruction of Babylon. Right? The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Right? <laughs> it says, I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction. All right? Over in the Middle East. And the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thy horses in thy chariots of salvation? Now, what are the chariots of salvation? Okay? The chariots, man. That's how he's going to come. As birds flying to defend Jerusalem. Well, it says, come up hither. And the elite notice. So they're preparing, but watch. It says, thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. Even thy word, Selah, thou didst cleave to the earth, all right, with rivers. Okay, so man, the form of the earth is going to change, man. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing water passed by, the deep utter his voice, all right, and so forth. So you can read more about that, but... Just showing you these these visions were saw by different prophets, man. The same vision. All right. So here we go. Revelation 6 and 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. This is quoting uh, Isaiah 34, which is aimed at you Edomites. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men which is not just Edomites, but it's going to be primarily Edomites because look, that's who we're going to get. We're going to bind their kings with chains, but if they're all burnt up in war, how are we going to do that? If they were, if there was a hell, wouldn't Esau go there? No. Yeah, he would go there, but there's, there's not a hell where you burn eternally. This is the, the prophetically what's going to happen. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains. Okay. And the mighty men and every bond man, because they're going to, you think they're going to go down to the bunkers and do work themselves? No, they're going to have their slaves down there. And every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That is these underground bunkers. Right. And. The way that they're created, they're created to take on so much force without really being moved, right? So the Lord put the spirit on them to create these bunkers to go underground for this prophecy to be fulfilled, right? In the kings of the earth, <laughs> the rulers, man, the elite, okay? Okay? And the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us. All right. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. See that? They're going to be like, oh, shit. So they're going to want to go deep. They want, they're going to want more rocks on top of the, 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 you know, the rocks that are on top of them to hide them from the destruction. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? So if there is a hell, what is this talking about? Because when you go to verse uh, Revelation 9 in verse... It's talking about the same war, nuclear war, Revelation 9 and 20, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plague, because like I said, everybody ain't going to be destroyed when Yahweh returns, man. The Lord is going to allow some people to be left. <laughs> and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. And idols, and gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and wood, which neither can see nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, all right, which the elite are at the forefront of mass murder, 
all right, nor of their sorceries. The elite are at the forefront of mass sorcery, nor of their fornication. The elite have led the world into rebellion against the Heavenly Father, right, nor of their thefts, okay? So they're going to be in those, uh, in those bunkers and they're not going to be, they're not going to repent. Okay. <laughs> There's no repentance for you Edomites and you, you heathen any damn way. Right. So they're going to hide in those bunkers for the purpose of this prophecy being fulfilled. Now, what happens after that with them? Because we know New Jerusalem, we're, we're going to be, what does the scripture say? Come up hither. So we know that we're going to be called up, changed, get the new bodies. But are we going to stay up there forever? Now, a question, all right, the be a beautiful thing to think about, because we don't have the answer, all right, is how long are we going to be up there? Because John eventually, in Revelation 21, <laughs> sees new Jerusalem. We start at one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. All right. For the first heaven, Esau's world. And the first earth, all right, were passed away and there was no more sea. All right. There's going to be a whole new world coming under the Israelites. The new heaven and a new earth. Jacob's reign under Yahawashai. Okay. So John says, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, see a Christian, and I believe Captain Tazariah even broke this down as actual, an actual city coming down from heaven. No, this is speaking of the tabernacle of the Most High, which will be with men, the elect. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is Yahweh Shai in the 144. Okay? And it breaks it down. And I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So this is a new government coming down on the earth. Okay? But the thing is, how long are we going to be up there? Because Ezra describes Yahweh Shai crowning. You know, the elect, you know, it's like a, a, a he said he's going to drink wine with us. So how long is that all going to be in earthly uh, uh, time? It ain't going to be a, a three days. So <laughs> who knows how long they're going to be in those bunkers? Right. Who knows? Who do you think? All right. So when we finally do come down. We're coming down to set up order, to bind their kings with chains. Let's get that. This is salvation, man. Psalms 149 and 4, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be uh, joyful in glory. This is salvation for the Israelites. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth, because we're going to be in our rest, in the two-edged sword in their hand. Now, what is that two-edged sword? Hey, that 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 uh, uh, rod of iron. Wait a minute. Revelation two and twenty-five. Revelation 2 and 26, and he that overcometh and keeping my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations, because when we come down, we're coming down to set up order. So heathen are going to be here, but the kings of the heathen are who we want, especially you goddamn Edomites. And he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I have received of my, my father. So... Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Yahweh is going to inherit the heathen. We are going to be joint heirs with him. And we're going to return to Jerusalem, which will be in shambles and rebuilt by the heathen. 
Okay? And we're going to have inheritance. Okay? And a large multitude will have an inheritance under Yahweh Shah in 144 in the, in, the, in the promised land. So that's the family reunion, the elect being, being, being brought back together as a bride adorned for her husband. So you Christians don't want to deal with all of these scriptures. You just want to take the Bible and talk about how everybody can be saved, but you don't have the understanding, man. This is salvation right here. A two-edged sword in their hand, verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and the punishments of the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So we're going to go, as it says in Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, and get you out of those bunkers. The Lord put the spirit on y'all to go in them bunkers and to create them bunkers and to make them secure enough to survive the destruction. For this point, Jeremiah 16 and 16. All right, as a matter of fact, I'll just jump to the point. Behold, this is after the Lord delivers the children of Israel from the land of the north. So that's going to be the new Passover in the kingdom. The deliverance from the spiritual Egypt. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Lord, and they shall fish them. After I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from the holes and from out of the holes of the rocks. Okay? <laughs> and we're going to have spiritual power. All right, so the, 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 little, the, the Israelites that are still wiggling around in the earth, either we're going to judge them or have mercy on them. Because remember, under Yahweh Shai, judgment is going to be given into the hands of the 144. We're going to be God on earth, man. Right? But, the, the, but we're coming to get the kings primarily to set up order. And we're going to hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from out of the holes of the rocks where they will be for a time before, for, before New Jerusalem comes down. And we're going to know exactly where you are. And we're going to have the spiritual capability to have the rocks move and, and, and get your ass. As a matter of fact, uh, see here, to bind their kings with change, chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. So the judgment written, hey, you heathen are going to get it. Okay. Now, what's that Isaiah 24? It's a lot here we go. Here we go. It froze up on me. Give me one second here. Let's see if it come up now. Let's get Isaiah 24. And. Woo. I just jumped to the point. Speaking of destruction, Isaiah 24 and 19. The earth is shut, this utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly wide. Nuclear destruction, the chariots. Okay. Prophecy being fulfilled, man. See, these people make you think that the end of the, the world is everybody being destroyed and the saints floating around in heaven forever and ever. No, 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 no. We're going to come down and set up order on the earth, man. And there will be servitude. Every kingdom has had servants. But then here it is, the kingdom of the Lord, the tabernacle of David. Which you notice Christians don't ever want to deal with the tabernacle of David. Because if you deal with the tabernacle of David, you have to acknowledge the heathen will be under us. Now in the Solomon, you know, that, that was after the heathen had been subdued and beaten down. That same process has to happen. And that's that first 1,000 year period. 
But that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. Isaiah 24 and 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Okay. So imagine the shape of the earth after the destruction. We don't even know how that's going to look. We've got so much to look forward to and to think about. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression shall be uh, the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it because of the wickedness that has happened. All of these things are coming to this earth, man. And we just read just two prophecies that let you know that the mountains and everything is going to be moving at the presence of the Lord in, in Babylon's destruction. And it shall fall and not rise again. This this world, this 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 earth, the way that things are now is never going to be again. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. See that? The proud rulers. Let's read that in the NLT. In that day, the Lord will punish the gods in the heavens and the proud rulers of the nations of the earth. OK, you, 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 you thought you were God, right? Well, hey, you're going to see the, 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 the sons of God face to face. With new bodies. And the scriptures say you're not even you're not going to repent. Now, eventually. The heathen outside of Esau will repent. And, you know, bow to Yahweh about Shai and the, the 144 and the rest of Israel. But Esau will never do that. That's why he got to go. So what are we going to do? How are we going to punish the proud rulers of the nations on the earth? Verse 22. And they shall be gathered together, rounded up as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. After many days, they shall be visited. So we go gather you up. All right, we're going to have a capability to create prisons. We ain't going to use your prisons. We're going to create our own. Throw you in there as we go conquering throughout the world. And we're going to come back and visit your ass. You see that? Let's read it in LT. They should be rounded up and put in prison. They will be shut up in prison and will be finally punished. All right. So the, 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 the elite in their family line are going to be slaves. That's why the Lord has these bunkers set up for this prophecy to be fulfilled. And you will all be taught how to, 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 to live righteously. As a matter of fact, when you get Zechariah, the, the uh, 12th chapter. Or is it the 14th chapter? After all of this d d destruction, <laughs> Zechariah 14 and 12, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall be consumed away while they're in their, they're standing up on their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. All right. This is the fire that's coming to the earth, man. Okay, and you're going to be witnessing the end of Esau's world. People are going to be like, damn. <laughs> Casting dust up on their heads. That's proof. You know, when the Lord returns, it talks about when Babylon is destroyed, other heathen are going to be casting dust on their head. All right, meaning they're going to be mourning. Thought everybody was going to be destroyed all at once and the saints are, and everybody's going to go to hell and. The saints will be, go, be in heaven. The Christians will shut the hell up. Dumbass nigga. <laughs> you Christians are a bunch of dumbass niggas, man. I'm just messing around, man. But for real. Um, so as you just keep reading, it's talking about fire, man. But after that, Zechariah 14 and 16, it shall come to pass... That everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the Lord of hosts. So this this is the prophecy that we read about in Micah, the fourth chapter, that this is this is the Lord's future reign. 
But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. This is the kingdom of heaven, the tabernacle of David being established on earth. Now there's a process of cleaning the earth up, getting Jerusalem built up, right? And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for the law will go forth of Zion, and a word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See that? So everyone that is left are going to have to keep the laws, man. And if they don't keep the laws, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, showing you this ain't talking about Israelites, but heathen, all Israel, will have the laws written in them. Even upon them shall be no rain. So we're going to be the gods of the earth. What Esau is trying to do on the left-hand side, messing with the manipulating the weather, all right? We're going to be able to do that in the spirit. So if you don't want to listen to us in our kingdom, there's judgments that are going to come. We're going to be able to plague the lands where you may be at. And if the family of Egypt... All right, the Hamites go not up and come not that have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So there you have it, man. The, the, the reason that these elite are in these bunkers is for all of these prophecies that we just read to come to pass. Somebody has to be left, and the family of the heathen have to pay, prepare slaughter, all right, for, the, for, the, uh, to the, for their children, for the iniquity of the fathers. Now, we know out of all of the nations, the Edomites are going to be the only ones after the 1,000 years that are completely obliterated. After the 1,000 years, the heathen will very well know what we uh, require and what, you know, to do and what not to do. All right, and 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 you know to bow to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and to keep the laws to the best of their ability. <clears throat> and Babylon will always be a hub of destruction to know not to come up against the Israelites. But gods who see the God in me. Now this this is from a drone, right? This boy leaked this footage right here. I want to show you. This is a bunker right here. This is an underground bunker. It's a so just imagine how deep it goes. <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. So hopefully I edify. I just wanted to go into that, man. Shalom.